Given the popularity of Drake ships amongst the less law-abiding Star Citizen communities, it's a little surprising to see a Drake ship badged up with police lights. But don't be fooled, the performance of this ship will definitely appeal to less peaceful Star Citizen players. I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the Star Citizen ship, the currently flyable Drake Cutlass Blue. As with some of the most interesting ships, she's multi-crew capable, although can easily be flown solo, and is described as an interdiction ship. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you'll know the drill by now. This video is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the three quarters of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you may choose to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1 – Ship Tour And for most players, you'll enter your Cutlass Blue via the ramp at the back. This leads you into an airlock section where there are 12 standard cargo units of cargo storage. Here, helpfully, the yellow boxes demonstrate this. There's then a fully working airlock which you can open and close which leads into the mid section. In this mid section, the main feature are these bounty hunter storage beds. On either side, there's an airlock. Again, this is a fully working airlock with two different sealable doors. These do offer access to the inside of the ship and are most useful in space. At the moment, those bounty hunter storage beds are just for show. Moving to the front of the ship, you get through to the cockpit access and habitation. There are two beds and a turret for a turret gunner. You can log out in the beds in-game. There's also a weapons rack and a pilot and co-pilot seat at the front. Part 2 – Combat Performance Your garden variety Cutlass Blue, similar to the Cutlass Black, comes well armed with four gimbaled size 2 weapons and a dual size 3 turret. Those gimbaled pilot weapons can be swapped out for fixed size 3 armament if you're that way inclined. In addition, there are 24 size 2 missiles aboard. Yes, you heard that right, 24 missiles. That adds a considerable amount of firepower, and crucially, you can upgun those to become up to six size 4 missiles, which help the Cutlass Blue fight larger targets. And in line with the Cutlass Black, this is an effective fighting ship. Although there's only a single size 2 shield generator, the hull itself is fairly rugged, and parts fall off long before the ship explodes. The firepower is sufficient to deal with small to medium sized targets effectively, and the handling is strong enough to be able to keep those weapons on target. The Cutlass Blue, somewhat uniquely, is armed with a QED, or Quantum Enforcement Device. Activated through the pilot's console, this feature lets you snare passing craft out of quantum travel and inhibit their ability to leave using their quantum drives. It's marketed as great for bounty hunters chasing their quarry. In reality, the current implementation is only really suitable for player versus player, and is more used by griefers rather than legitimate bounty hunters. But it's one of the unique selling points for this ship. Part 3 – Handling and Visibility Starting with visibility in your Cutlass Blue, and in line with the other Cutlass models, you can expect a fairly good experience here. Whilst there are a couple of struts to obstruct the pilot's view, generally there's good visibility out to the front, 
sides and above. It's notable, however, that the front console can feel a little obstructive from time to time. When it comes to handling, the Cutlass Blue is fairly good. As a smaller ship, it points responsively, and the ability to rotate the main engines 90 degrees through use of the VTOL feature can help the Cutlass Blue to pull off some less predictable manoeuvres. Top speed is fairly reasonable for a ship of this size, and acceleration in a straight line does a good job of getting you there. Braking can be a little slower, but is comparable to other ships at this size. It's worth noting that when planet side, the nose wants to drop a little, and so you'll want to keep a little bit of constant back pressure on the stick to stay airborne. And the stock quantum drive? Yes, you guessed it, that'll want replacing. It has great range, but an awful spool time, cooldown, and woeful traverse speed. Part 4 Operating Costs Thankfully, you can make money with a Cutlass Blue in a lot of different ways. With ample internal space, box delivery type contracts are well suited. There's also 12 cargo units of internal cargo storage, which means, in theory, you could trade with a Cutlass Blue, although in reality the margins with that low storage space are not going to set any records. But where the Cutlass Blue really shines is in the advertised role of combat, especially bounty hunter contracts. For the vast majority of these contracts, the Cutlass Blue is more than capable of handling the job at hand, and making a lot of money in the process. And somewhat helpfully, refuel, repair and rearmament costs are fairly modest, usually into the low thousands, which is considerably below the sort of income you would expect to earn. Part 5 The Verdict The Cutlass Blue is an interesting ship. It performs well at a variety of roles, and that ability to adapt to your own preferences, whilst having room aboard for friends, is a real plus. The inclusion of police lights on what is clearly an outlaw-focused ship is an interesting choice, but it's a fun little touch. The QED right now is a little gimmicky, and given how impotent it is when fighting the AI, means it's likely only to be a feature you're interested in for PvP activities, at least for now. And likewise, those bounty hunter mini jails in the midsection look really cool, but right now are functionally useless in game. And here's the problem with the Cutlass Blue. Combat-wise, it's not really much different to the base Cutlass Black model, with less versatility due to the smaller cargo storage area, but all you get for the trade-off is the inclusion of the Quantum Inhibitor. And at $175 or 2.5 million Alpha UEC in-game, that's for almost twice the price of what you'd pay for a Cutlass Black. Don't get me wrong. It's a fun, niche little ship, and if you've earned the money in-game to buy it, I can respect that. Equally, if you're really confident that CIG will deliver the exact gameplay you're hoping for in terms of bounty hunting, then you might be tempted. But for me, it's overshadowed by just how cheap the Cutlass Black offers an alternative for. But do you agree? What do you think of the Cutlass Blue? Let me know by sharing your thoughts in the comments. And if you've enjoyed the video, you might consider clicking the like button. Outside of that, if you're looking for a group who plays Star Citizen regularly, I've included a link to my organisation in the video description. Thank you for watching.